I'm, I'm, I'm professor in the College of Information Science and Engineering. And I also, as the, as Kinao Sensei introduced, I'm also working as a visiting general chief scientist uh, in Panasonic uh, AI Solutions Center. So, uh, okay, so, but uh, this is a, I think this is a very interdisciplinary workshop. And I would like to show some sort of the big picture. And, and the kind of abstract bit picture is also understandable. So I'd like to show some practical and concrete example of my research as well. So this is also the reason why Kitano Sensei invited me to uh, do this workshop. Uh, I'm reading a kind of uh, called the International and Interdisciplinary Research Center of Next Generation Artificial Intelligence and Semiotics in Ritzmaker University. This is a kind of university funded the research project. And actually they encourage to have a kind of interdisciplinary collaboration inside of this university. And actually, I have been interested in semiotics. Why? Well, I'm a mechanical engineering engineer. But uh, when we think about the collaboration, communication between human and robot, we have to understand what is the semantics. And uh, what is uh, semiotics? And uh, what is understanding of language? And so on. So we have to do the, let's say, the learning, learning computer science and learning of mechanical engineering is not enough to uh, build new, uh, have say, future robot, I think. So that we set up this kind of five groups. And one of the groups, uh, one of the group is a group of semiotics. And uh, Kano Sensei is a kind of chief leader, one of the chief leader of this project. And actually, the, the, but, but, but many parts of this project are from the engineering side. And some topics are related to self-driving cars. And some, some topics are from uh, service robots and sound technology, and so on. Anyway, anyway, you may know, most of you, of course, know that there is a huge advances in the AI and robotics these days. You know, Google Brain, the Google DeepMind, and Facebook, and the kind of giants in the internet services, uh, they built and set up the great AI research centers. And based on deep learning, deep learning is a kind of the buzzword that is this. But that actually, actually, from the, uh, even from the academic viewpoint, they made a huge progress, actually. So the AlphaGo, uh, was kind of, it's already two years ago, but uh, this is based on the several the key te technologies, deep learning, apparent learning, of multiple research. Uh, they are kind of a very, very, uh, how to say, uh, the concrete, the concrete, kind of specific the computational technology. But uh, based on the theories, they beat the world champion the, of their goal. Okay? And self driving car, the no, all, all, all uh, automobile industries and electric companies are looking are looking at so the market or future market of autonomous driving car and actually Panasonic as well and this is also caused by the the advancement in the self localization technique uh, visual detection the recognition techniques and the vehicle control uh, methods and uh, so the the and uh, based on this kind of success. There are many writers and uh, the people on the TV and the people on the newspaper says, oh, the singularity is coming and deep learning can solve everything. But of course, that's not true. <laughs> so we have still so many pro pro problems, challenges. So the, actually, the way we look at our environment, our daily life, we cannot find any laws that, that help us. So actually, the real environment that this uh, and the uh, human world communication is still very very challenging uh, problem. So the actually long term human machine co communication the collaboration, like uh, actually the children that have, have said that four or five or six years children can outperform the current robot in our daily life. They cannot they cannot outperform in the uh, say autonomous control and uh, playing go and the brain games. So the now AI is better than the better than our, our children. 
<laughs> in that period, but, but, uh, but the, the we human has more flexible intelligence and adaptivity. And uh, actually, why we couldn't, why we couldn't build such kind of system? So one of the answer is, is that uh, we haven't understand our mental and cognitive development process. So one of the one of the target, one of the uh, how to say, one one of the challenge uh, in our uh, AI research field is to understand not not only create intelligence but also understand the intelligence from the computational viewpoint. The, actually, my main motivation is to understand the kind of dynamics or computational the computational uh, process of human development, uh, human cognitive development. So computational understanding of mental development uh, from behavior learning to language acquisition. This is kind of our challenge. And actually, a human, when we look at our children, uh, actually, uh, this is my first time and second time. And I took this picture six or, or seven years ago. So, yeah. Maybe uh, he is now he is now a junior high school student, and uh, I I should stop using this video anymore. <laughs> I think, <laughs> but, but uh, anyway, uh, a human child acquires many physical skills and uh, passenger concepts and knowledge, including language, uh, through physical and social interaction with his or her environment. So the question is, how do we become able to? Uh, obtain such kind of knowledge and start communicating uh, with others. So that we actually, if we, if we, uh, how to say, the, from, from the viewpoint of the, com, from the viewpoint of the classical artificial intelligence, okay, let's create such kind of pattern recognition system by programming or give some data directly to the uh, CPU or kind of the computational system. But, uh, but uh, I noticed that we cannot have access uh, direct access to their brain, okay? The, the children have to learn such kind of such kind of knowledge from their own experiences. That's the point. So we would like to obtain an understanding of the computational pro computational process of mental development and language acquisition. And sometimes the people say it's called this kind of approach, constructive approach. So let's create uh, something to understand something. So, so, so actually, so, so when we look at the, when we, when we describe the, the, how to say, the interaction between the agent, uh, here agent uh, is regarded as a kind of robot or human. So this is a kind of autonomous agent. This is a, a, a interacting with the environment. Uh, from the abstract viewpoint, they get sense of information and execute some actions. And this kind of loop, uh, this kind of loop uh, gives some information flow. But based on this kind of interaction, the agent, actually the uh, human children, human child, human child uh, generate, uh, acquire motor skills and uh, possible categories, and uh, even planning capabilities. So sometimes we call this kind of motor skills and passive categories such kind of things and low level cognitive capabilities. And sometimes uh, we mention the syntactic, um, how to say, syntactic uh, capability and uh, planning capabilities, the uh, or logical thinking, the high level cognitive capabilities. And so the, the, we have to, uh, the, the important thing, uh, important thing is that all of them were acquired by, uh, through the interaction with the environment. So in addition to this kind of physical interaction, we have another kind of interaction. It's a kind of social interaction. So the, there is, a, uh, how to say, uh, agents, there are agents outside of the, our mental system, and um, it's, in some sense, it's also a part of environment, a kind of special environment. And, uh, and we have, the uh, some sense of information is coming from the other agents, like the speech signals and the gestures and behaviors and so on. But it's still sense of information. There is no pre-existing knowledge about that, 
And through such kind of social interaction, the we the agent has to get the the, the kind of scale of estimation of intention and simple systems, uh, so uh, language. So <coughs> the language, the language acquisition, when we say the language acquisition, so that language acquisition even involves a syntax, a syntax, a lexicon, the phonetics, semantics, the pragmatics, and so. It's so complicated, but uh, we humor, uh, everybody can do that. Almost everybody, almost everybody can do that. And from the viewpoint of the computer, the, so that, okay, so that when we, when we show, when I show this kind of figures, the computational scientists and robotists, uh, they tend to say, okay, let's build the, these modules one by one, and let's connect them together and use it. But uh, the, another challenge, is that actually in our cognitive systems, they are closely uh, related and learned together. And actually when we learn, uh, when we uh, learn new vocabulary, uh, that depends on the position categories and uh, action and so on. And uh, if, from the viewpoint of linguistics or uh, uh, language, uh, the, the Okay, uh, maybe uh, I have to rush. Sorry. <laughs> so the, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a widely known that the, uh, the syntactic parsing and the semantic parsing are, are mutually dependent. So we have to build up the we have to build up a kind of a, a total cognitive system that can that can organize this kind of memories uh, in a bottom up manner. So this is uh, our challenge, but so far. My story is very abstract, I think. So I uh, what kind of kind of research, but, uh, part, particularly uh, is the uh, community of our group uh, is doing. So here I'd like to give a some clever research about community by showing a video. And this is a robot. Uh, this robot move around and find the object and uh, grasp it to get the uh, haptic information and uh, and uh, shift it to get uh, auditory information. And uh, look at uh, from different directions to get the visual information. And somehow they shoot pictures. <laughs> they took, it took the pictures and obtain such kind of information. So the robot get a kind of multimodal information from this sensor motor interaction. And uh, actually the the, 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 okay, so we, we I, I will skip the, the technical part, but some machine learning methods can integrate such kind of information and find the categories or related to representation from that. Okay, the, basically the robot can find this kind of clusters, the categories from such kind of multimodal information. And uh, actually the robot cannot know the name of them, because uh, no, uh, no, no participants, no uh, human users tell them uh, this kind of levels. But um, the, even without any intervention from human, the robot uh, can find this kind of clusters categories uh, by itself. So the, this is very, this is very similar to our categories. Uh, but uh, this, you may, uh, you may wonder. What's the difference uh, between the first these animals and these animals? So at the glance, at the glance, they are so similar. What's the difference? So I, I, I really like this example. So I said, at the glance, at the glance. At the glance means when you see it, okay? So it means visual information, okay? Visual information. So from the visual information, they both are uh, animal toy, and so they, it's very similar. I thought, yeah. And uh, but uh, the this the first one is uh, made by the made by towel, made of towel, and there is a lava. <laughs> so uh, when you touch it, the grass bit, the difference is significant. And maybe uh, the your children, I can notice that, so very easily. So the much more information is very important. Uh, for our consideration. So, actually, the, the, the external sense uh, introduced 
uh, when, when Kino Sensei introduced me, uh, I am um, interested in uh, simple grounding problem. But uh, my main argument is that simple grounding problem is not a well defined problem. Yeah. And, uh, and our simple system uh, itself was generated by our society and by, our, by based on our cognitive systems. So to solve the so-called simple ground problem, we have to change the problem to the simple emergence problem. So we have to understand the bottom-up process of forming, oops, forming the, the internal representation systems and the kind of the social uh, simple systems as well. So uh, we have how many, how many minutes? Five minutes, I can use? Okay, so, okay. So following this kind of idea, so that we, I, I, uh, we are thinking that we have to build a kind of a computational system that can learn language at least uh, based on sensory motor information. So it's also uh, important for, the, for our future robot. So this is a very, uh, I would say, comical and uh, uh, cartoon-like example. So when the, when the, when the, when the user uh, send to the vacuum cleaner. So uh, please clean up the sound table or something like that. The, ro the, the robot have to go to the appropriate place. And uh, the robot cannot understand where is the sub table. Uh, it cannot understand that, that that caused the problem. Okay? So when we think about the kind of this kind, just, 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 just this problem. So the learning place name. Learning place name. So learning place name is not a, is not just a problem of natural language processing. And it's not just a, how to say, ma mapping or localization of the robot. So for example, when we think about a kitchen, a place called the kitchen and clean up the kitchen. So what is a kitchen? And where is a kitchen? So the, if, if you are, if you are the kind of classical robotician, uh, you will, you will, uh, say, give a, give a code and set out, okay, that in the XY coordinate, uh, this point is kitchen or something like that. But a kitchen is not a XY coordinate, you know, you know, but oops, 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 oops. Maybe I can come back. <laughs> okay. I'm coming. Oops. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. So, the... <clears throat> okay, kitchen has uh, some sort of region. Okay. And, uh, the, and, uh, when, please uh, think about, think about, remember the, your, the kitchen in your house. So, this place, a kitchen, and where is the kitchen? The kitchen is a place that you or your wife is cooking. And, uh, oh, there is a sink, and a microwave, and a fry pan, and lights. And such kind of information is obtained from visual information. And, uh, maybe somebody calls, uh, oh, this is a kitchen, or this is uh, something, uh, I say, the place for microwave or something like that. And it depends on, it depends on the linguistic information as well. So, in some sense, such kind of concept of place is also multimodal category. Multimodal, it's based on multimodal information. So, of course, smell, or sounds, are also affecting such kind of information. And uh, we built, uh, this paper uh, for, uh, published in the last two years robotics conference. And we, uh, the, my, the, uh, we built the new method uh, for place learning, but uh, it, it actually integrating ma many cognitive uh, process. <laughs> so it's a little bit complicated, and, but uh, some parts are representing map learning, and this part is uh, representing a set localization, and this part is the for clustering and uh, clustering of place, and this part is representing the speech recognition system, and. Uh, <laughs> The robot to get a speech uh, information, and uh, at first the robot does not have does not have the, any list of vocabularies, list of words. 
So from such kind, from the sense of information, the, the author information, the robot, uh, start to find the words, words, vocabularies, uh, from human robot interaction. And, uh, that's this learning process is, uh, okay, okay, and so that's this part, uh, representing the visual information. The, the, to, to get the visual information, the robot has a, has a camera and uh, deep running visual recognition system and get uh, somehow the high level features of the visual information. And the, the, this part combines the kind of linguistic information and the visual information and spatial information uh, into, a, into a category of space. And the robot, and uh, it experiment, robot move around and gradually uh, form the map of the environment, and at the same time, the robot has to estimate where he is on the map. So it's also an important problem. And time by time, time to time, to time uh, a user uh, it spoke to the robot, or oh, here is a toilet, this is a toilet, or you are walking <laughs> on the floor, or something like that. And gradually the robot will form the kind of the special concept. And they get the uh, get run press next. Okay. Uh, this is uh, so the the what what the, even even the robot has this kind of uh, kind, kind of complicated model. What the robot can do is just running, <laughs> just learning uh, learning the name of phrases. So we 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 are now trying to build the how to say more how to say more. Uh, let's say advanced the knowledge or capability. And for example, the, the based on the, this kind of learning process, I would like to give commands to the robot to go to the toilet. But uh, in current place, a robot understands that the, every speech I give, give, give to him is the name of here. Okay. So the, if, it is, if I say, oh, please go to the toilet, and the robot understood, oh, this here, this is a toilet, or something like that. So the, they cannot uh, estimate our speech out. And so, so, and, uh, and, uh, so this, this, this workshop uh, is related to the virtual reality and mixed reality and AR. So I think that AR and MR is now, is becoming uh, very important in human robot interaction as well. And after building, after robot gets such kind of information, actually we cannot understand, we human user cannot understand what's happening inside of the robot's brain. Okay, this is happening inside of the robot's brain. So, okay, let's visualize it. So that is our last year's project. We use the HoloLens to visualize what the robot is thinking about. So the, this is an example. The, this uh, hemisphere shows the kind of operational concept, and concept, uh, and the upper part is showing that oh, the robot thinks this is a sofa, this is uh, the trash can, and so on. And actually, the, the robot cannot be perfect system. So the important point is if we understand uh, this robot is misunderstanding the environment in this way we can have a, a kind of very natural communication. So uh, I think the MR and AR technology uh, can contribute uh, to, the, to the kind of the, say, the, to make the human robot interaction more natural and harmonious, I think. Okay, uh, that's all. Thank you very much. I think um, I loved when you talked about like the um, you know like looking at humans and their more than flexible intelligence mm -hmm. and trying to emulate that. And I, I mean, one of the things that when you that last image that you were showing where where it was kind of you know looking at the robots proprioception is such a fascinating idea in terms of you know we're only humans still don't quite get understand what proprioception means and how to map it. So it's really interesting exercise. So I'm going to now open it up to the audience to um, to ask you, I'm, I'm sure they've got millions of questions, So, but we'll only be able to hold it at one or two. So we've got one question here and maybe one more.
Okay, yeah, so you have people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name's Eric. I'm representing a small research group doing uh, work in mixed augmented reality and teaching and learning. More specifically, a lot of us are working in language teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. And one of the big kind of conundrums that we are coming in as practitioners trying to develop systems in classrooms and in open areas uh -huh. is this idea like you have built like a nice robot and it's going out and collecting multimodal information, uh -huh. like virtual information, visual hearing information, and the collection of this information, we're finding a lot of ethical and even legal walls in the collection of this information uh -huh. for that robots and even in like we see TechLash and Facebook and they're getting into increasing trouble uh -huh. because a lot of these systems rely on networks of scale because uh -huh. if you want to know where the trash can is you uh -huh. want to be able to compare uh -huh. it to other trash cans uh -huh. and, and even to understand input commands you have to record people's voices and what they're doing uh -huh. and where they are and then with facial patterns and things like that. So basically, it's my general question is, it's like how, what, what kind of doing these projects, what your general thoughts of how you may want to treat and collect data at moving forward and how you see that relating to mixed and augmented reality okay. as these systems increasingly get put into robots collecting information. And you mean, especially for the people at the Rico and the issues? Yes. Ah, okay, okay, thank you very much. So, the, uh, as you know, the uh, uh, escalation issue and legal issue is a huge challenge in the AI community nowadays. The, actually, the, uh, how to say, the, the main uh, readers of this, this uh, uh, the, uh, the AI progress these days are the kind of internet giants, Facebook and Microsoft and the Google, and they are collecting so many data. And uh, actually, deep learning and uh, machine learning is based on data. So the data is important. So actually, the, I think, so uh, 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 the, my short <laughs> answer is, I don't have a clear idea for that. And but the better important point from academia, from academic, academic researchers, that we should distinguish the technology part, the technology part, and the application of the technology to the world, to the society. And application to this, uh, and actually self-driving car, uh, when we look at self-driving car, the most problem is not the control and not the detection, but uh, laws. And uh, laws about laws. <laughs> it's just sort of joking aside. And, uh, so the <laughs> anyway, sorry, sorry. And uh, so the, the, what I would like to say is that, the, so, the, so in some sense, we have to have an innovation in the, legal and ethical field, not the technological field. So we uh, have said uh, in that the technology is not for just just for the technology, uh, have said engineers and scientists, but for the, the scholars in uh, human, humanities and social science, of course. And uh, but the, so the when, when application, the engineering is not just for the application. So from, from our viewpoint, my, my motivation is like this. So uh, the, to, uh, to, to understand the human cognitive development and uh, from the computational viewpoint, so we have to uh, give, how to say, uh, have to uh, study this kind of uh, models. So in such case, so this kind and uh, how to say conditions about this kind of research it's a bit different from the conditions about the uh, related to the application side. So we should uh, dis distinguish them, uh, but uh, we should have a kind of innovation in the legal and ethical field, I think. Thanks. I know that's not an easiest question. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it's a question we can take through the next couple of days, actually, in terms of bringing that kind of really steam approach and kind of learnings that we can have from Areas. Do we have one last quick question? She. Yes. <laughs> it's a quick yeah. 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 Thank you for the presentation. And uh, my question is uh, after the start of the presentation, mm -hmm. I'd like to know uh, the, the, the scheme of the. Uh, uh, Professor Oshima said that uh, there is a interwitzmekan, you know, uh, collaborative mm -hmm. project. And uh, what, what, what the mission, what, what the reality of that? 
that's something I'm very much interested in. Mm -hmm. And what I found uh, that there is only Kitano sensei who is in the field of the humanity or mm -hmm. social science, and uh, it's like a gender balance. We need a kind of balance between you know, engineering and, uh, and psychology. And, people. and that, this is a kind of the very university inner matter, but I'm mm -hmm. very interested in that kind of matter. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that here is Masaki Fujihata san, mm -hmm. who I know more than quarter century or so. Wow. And uh, I, 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 I'm interested in. What, what 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 you are interested in? What, what what's your uh, you know participation of this this presentation of this kind of project? Uh, no, I think to uh, do anything with this project. Mm -hmm. But today, just uh, I'm trying to show my uh, art project. But uh, each year, I also have a uh, one workshop. Uh, uh, as I mean, the the dean, the the whole thing is <laughs> secret. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, I know what I'm talking about it. This is the, 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 the center of the secrets. <laughs> How are you That's that joking. <laughs> However, um, you know, um, Professor Taniguchi is so kind. He, he, he's, he, 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 once again, He's uh, interested in what might be called symbol learning program or symbol emergence program, <clears throat> and uh, and he he is also very well known, uh, you know, in each case, Biblio Mato, that, that that program is the inventor. So uh, he knows a lot of humanities, sociological studies, and. Uh, almost uh, familiar with every uh, field, and he's he, somehow he started to interest. Uh, he started to be interested in uh, humanities going on in this campus. Uh, in addition to me, uh, we will have uh, Professor Yoshida in this uh, afternoon. Uh, he is also a humanistic scholar, but. Uh, Yoshida and me are also interested in symbol grading program. So, uh, Professor Taniguchi called us to join their project, and uh, he got huge funds from the uh, top level of the university fund, and uh, we started this kind of group. And Professor or artist Mr. Fujihata. Uh, somehow we started to, to get along with personally. He, it started in Berlin. He, 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 he yelled at me harshly in the middle of the Berlin in Germany. And uh, that's, our, uh, that's another uh, international conference uh, about media art. And I invite him to to join in this university. He so um, personally, officially, and um, various kinds of uh, intervention, uh, clustering uh, are going on in this university. And somehow, I I I I'm wishy washy liberalists. So I, 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 I take part in every corner of what's going on here. So that's why. Right. So we might leave the questions. Well, hopefully we'll have a bit of time at the end as well. So when we bring the whole session.